Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. Just recording this video for Free Accounting Software uh, to show the users our new desktop product. Um, the desktop product is going to complement our existing cloud um, solution. So now um, this is it. When I've started up, and the, and the first thing to do is open your um, FAS identity file or uh, we'll create one. I've got one, so I'm just opening it up and type the password. Okay, once you've done that, you can either open a, an existing file. I'm actually just going to create a new file here. Uh, just copy the ABN. Okay, now um, the desktop product actually works on a financial year basis, um, which is different to the online one. But um, in this case, I'm just going to put in a actual, actually just a quarter because um, the ATO system that I'm connecting to is just um, got data for that quarter. So um, once you've done that, you just save the file. Um, you've got to um, save it to you. It's, it's a desktop software, so you're saving the file locally. Okay, um, you can enter a few more details. Um, be business for this example I don't need to but um, yep um, the system has a default chart of accounts um, I'll just go into one uh, one of the things I changed here is I put a default tax code on the account so um, that will automatically show when um, we enter a transaction the um, also the measurable has been combined with the account so um, people who are using inventory or payroll would have used measurables um, and, and they're actually combined into the same um, concept so a uh, bit simpler there. Okay there's a default set of tax codes and you can, these are the main ones um, that you'll need. Um, you can add new ones and delete ones, you can do that with the accounts as well. Um, and it's just pretty much exactly the same. Or actually, I did um, remove the. Um, used to have a classification for the tax amount, the BAS classification for tax amount, and I've just combined those things to make it a bit easier. Um, okay, now the other thing you'd probably set up is um, I've called them counterparties. Um, we're called customers, suppliers, employees. Um, basically just pick the generic name. I hope that name doesn't confuse too many people. Um, so I'll just create one here because we'll need one for this um, demo. Right, well we, we don't need any other information for this particular demo. Okay, um, now I'll enter a couple um, sales uh, for this, there's no sales here obviously yet. Um, for this, uh, hang on, what's going on here? Not letting me select that box. Okay, there we go. Um, that was odd. Just give it a comment. So there's there's a sort of comment that relates to the transaction as a whole, and then there's your line comments. Um, so I'll just select sales revenue. You can see that the tax code automatically pops up there. Um, and I've got this screen sort of shrunk down quite a bit so that you can. Um, so it displays in the video, but you'd normally have it bigger than this. Um, you can add a second line. You can put it to sales revenue. You can override this tax code. And in fact, I'll make that a GST free sale. And then save. Right, when you save, the transaction appears in this um, list up here. Um, and you can 
click new and add a new transaction and I'll add two so that we've got some more transactions here and I'll just put this to sales revenue alright so that'll do it um, now I want to show you an activity statement lodgement so um, go to the activity statement list page now here the uh, system is generating automatically the information needed to list your activity statements and so this first section comes from, comes from your business profile or the business file um, the second section uh, which is a is agent information actually um, comes from the uh, identity file that I opened at, at the beginning and um, so you know, I've opened an identity file that is a tax agent identity file and that's why it's got the tax agent number there um, you don't need to view that um, so I've selected the OSKEY and actually it's just picking up the OSKEY from the computer I'm working on because it is desktop software and then click download and pre-fill all okay so in the in the cloud software that we've currently got it was this uh, list process and then a pre-fill which is a separate process this is, this is doing it in one process so um, now this is just connecting to an ATO test system uh, this is the activity statement we want to see. I don't know why this is being returned, but um, it, you know, it's just a test system. Um, okay, so once you've listed your activity statement, you can just double click on it and you go to the transactions. So the system generates these um, transactions ob obviously from what you've entered. Um, and you know, you can just see like at the bottom there's a total of the transaction. So you know, you'd review that and if you're happy with that you click go to the activity statement lodgement page okay so on this page um, uh, you've got your activity statement totals we didn't enter any purchases but we've got the sales there um, there's a question here for uh, your GST reporting option with simplified bass they won't be asking that so most people won't um, see that option um, anyway um, this bus has also got a pay-as-you-go installment which I'm just going to skip and um, there's your declaration uh, I'm lodging this as a tax agent so um, so it's grayed out and I'll fill in this declaration here and just type in my OSCE password there is a um, pre-lodge validate option um, but you don't need to do that, I'm just going to go straight to the lodge ok, it gives you a status update here, sending authority statement to ATO and now it says lodgement complete so, you know, green is good, so you just get this ok, it was lodged kind of thing and some other useful information like the ATO might send you some message here to say um, you d they don't have an email address for you, so if you need to um, change that you actually need to contact the ATO and they'll set up your email address um, okay well that's that's lodged so um, that's that's almost it but you know what I find actually happens often after this is that someone goes and realizes hey that was wrong um, and so they go back and, and one of the things we struggled with with um, the existing system is that people can actually you can close your ledger to s but people do change their transactions so in any case um, like if you click on this transaction and go hey look um, really that should have been not 220 it should have been 330 and then hit save um, the system is actually going to stop you from doing that it's going to say error you cannot modify the transaction as it is on a lodged activity statement um, so this is a good thing because it prevents you from um, changing the activity statement um, and confusing your accountant or wasting your accountant's time and and, and then getting a bill for that um, so 
you know, if you do see that it's wrong, what would you do? Well, you would um, um, you would reverse this transaction and then um, and then enter a correct one. So let's say uh, we click this thing here, copy to new transaction, put in a negative figure to reverse it, hit save. Okay, that's good. That's saved. Now we've reversed that, and now we want, might want to uh, again copy it to a new transaction and put in what should have been there which is the 330 so um, um, probably a good idea when you do these things is to to actually um, make a note you might explain why that was done um, and then let me save that new one as well okay now um, Let's go back and fix up that activity statement. So this activity statement was wrong, or lodged yeah, with the wrong transaction. So uh, we click this button here, revise selected activity statement. When we do that, we get this, um, this new activity statement appear here. So let's click on that one. Okay, and now you can see that these transactions are grayed out. That's because they're the um, transactions that were already lodged. Um, so actually the new transaction is not showing there yet so we want to click this regenerate transactions button okay so now what we can see is that we've got three grayed out transactions which were on the original bus and we've got the two um, corrections one to reverse the original one out and the um, new corrected transaction there um, and uh, you know at that point you can go go to activity statement lodgement and um, and then you can lodge it now um, in this header there is a revision indicator it says revision is true um, so that's basically the difference between a um, uh, original bass and a revised bass so you know actually I don't know exactly what's going to happen here because this is going to an ATO test system I don't know that it's set up to handle a revised bass lodgement but I'll give it a go anyway what would happen in the live environment is this um, um, will um, lodge and it will give you, or, or not necessarily lodge, they, they might say that there was, you're not allowed to revise the bass, but um, they'll actually um, issue a revised document and ID number. And this is said, okay, it's lodged, so, um, and then, um, you know, you, you've got this document identification number here. If they accept the revision, um, they issue a, a new document identification number. I don't think it's that this is going to have done that. Um, if we go back, yeah, it's the same document and ID number still there. But um, you know, that's that's a test system that we're connecting to. So yeah, and that's um, and and that's you know, if we go back in, that's that's keeping a record of what was ori originally on the first activity statement plus the um, corrections on the revised activity statement which is a feature I think that's going to um, save us a few headaches there anyway look I hope that this um, video has been helpful for you and thanks for watching